In my previous video, I used a disk mesh to create this VFX. Now, a disk mesh is a simple and versatile mesh that is widely used in VFX in the gaming industry. It is commonly used to create effects like energy source, like a force field or portals. In this tutorial, I'll show you two ways to make a disk mesh in Blender. Now, if you don't know about Blender, it's an open source 3D software that's as powerful as most of the industry standard softwares nowadays. And most importantly, it'll always be free. So if you're new to 3D, I highly recommend you to start with Blender. So after we opened Blender, this is the starting page that we'll see. Usually I just go with the general and then we need to delete the default cube. One thing to notice is I'm using the industry compatible key binding here. And to change that, we go to edit and preference key maps. And then here you can choose the industry compatible key mapping. That's because I use Unreal Engine a lot too. And it's just easier because I'm used to the shortcuts in Unreal Engine. So now the first step to make a disk mesh is by starting with a Saphir. Now to add a Saphir, we can do that by hitting Shift A and then go to Mesh and UV Saphir. Here's some parameters to play with, but the default setting is just fine for making a disk mesh. The next step is to select the Saphir and hit 1 on your keyboard. So that will go into the edit mode for vertices. And one thing to do here is to toggle the X-ray mode so we could select everything, whether it's in the front or in the back. The next step is to click on the gizmo here to get a dead on angle on either the X or the Y, because we're just going to delete the bottom half of this sphere. And now we could just use the select box tool and then select the bottom half. Now we hit delete select vertices and then we have deleted the bottom half now we're left with this top cap of a sphere and we want everything to go on the same level on the z axis so we get a disc right and we can do that by again selecting everything we hit r and that will give us the scaling option here if we let go and then we get this menu of resize on the bottom left of your screen and we can just hit zero here on the Z and now we're pretty much done with the disk. Pretty easy, right? Now the next step is to go back to object mode. We could do that by hitting four on your keyboard and now we need to move the mesh to the origin. So we could do that by right click, set origin and geometry to origin. The next step is to edit the UV. So we go to the UV editing tab here. And if we go to edit mode again, select all the vertices, we can, we can see that it's only occupying half of the full UV range. That's because we deleted the bottom half earlier, right? So what we have to do here is again, select everything. And now we move this to the middle. We could toggle snapping by holding control right now. And then again, hit R to scale. And then also hold control for the snapping. So now it's occupying the full UV range and we're pretty much done with it. Another way to make a disc mesh is to start with a cylinder. So again, press four to go into object mode and then hit shift A mesh and then cylinder. Again, the default settings just fine. Now we hit three to go into edit mode, but it's editing on the face. So what we want to do here is to delete the top face, delete faces and the bottom face. So now we're left with kind of like the wall of the cylinder. And again, we're gonna go into the edit mode for vertices. We hit one and select the top vertices. We're going to scale it on both X and Y to zero. So it's now basically just one dot here. And the next part, we're going to scale everything on the Z axis to zero too. And now we're pretty much done with the disk mesh. It's pretty simple. So again, we need to go to UV editing, 
select all the vertices by hitting Control A, and then we're gonna scale the UV so it's taking up the full range again. Same thing, remember to hold Control to toggle the snapping. So the next step is to add some loop cuts on here so we don't get some weird artifacts in Unreal Engine. We could do that by clicking the loop cut tool here and then go to the menu and choose the number of cuts. So this about, looks about right. So now I can see it automatically populates the UV2 and we have our disk mesh here. Now the last step is to export this mesh. So we can do that by selecting the mesh, go to files, export, FBX. Now here we have some exporting options select limited to selected objects and I'll just include the mesh. Another thing is under the geometry and the smoothing we select face and then we just give it a name and then export. And now in Unreal Engine for, to import the disk mesh we just hit import, select the mesh and then open. So for the import options, I personally turn off the generate missing collisions because mostly we don't need collisions for VFX. Another thing is to remove the create new materials here and then just hit import all. And now we have our disk in our game. So here you can see a brick texture that tiles on both X and Y. And if we apply this on the disk mesh, we just import it, you can see it also tiles perfectly, but right now the X actually goes around this disc and the Y is from the center to the edge. If we start tiling this here, you can see it has like this cool effect. And that's just because how the UV of this disc mesh is laid out and it's pretty useful in VFX. So here we have the mesh we just made. The left one is the cylinder and the right is the sphere. Now if we apply the texture we made in the last tutorial, we get pretty much the same results. So yeah, that's basically how you make a disk mesh in Blender and how to import it to your project in Unreal Engine. It's pretty simple, but with the right material and texture, it could create amazing VFX. So I hope this helps. And if you're curious about how I made this material that I'm showing here, remember to check out my previous video on how to move a texture. I hope you like this video. If you find it helpful, please like and subscribe and comment on what I should make next. That's all for today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.